The most powerful sermon of Jesus was when he silently carried his cross to Calvary to fulfill the promise of the Father. The sermon of love and forgiving. Lent is a season of fasting and spiritual preparation to celebrate the Paschal Mysteries, the Passion, Death, Resurrection, and Ascension of the Lord. It culminates in the Holy Week beginning with Passion Sunday or Palm Sunday, the day where we commemorate the triumphant entry of Jesus into the eternal city of Jerusalem. The people welcomed him with palm branches shouting Hosanna at the top of their voices. Holy Week is a time of more intense fasting, reading and prayers in which we pay particular attention to the final days, suffering and execution of Jesus. The liturgy of each day of this week offer us readings from the servant songs of Isaiah, Hebrews and the final days of Jesus in Jerusalem. Then we have the three days when we concentrate on the foot washing and the new commandment on the Holy Thursday, the passion from John's Gospel on Good Friday, the great vigil of Easter on Holy Saturday evening, marking Easter and celebration of Easter on Easter Sunday. So Lent and Holy Week are thus all about discipling people in the way of Jesus. During Lent, we focus on the core stories and practices of Jesus' ministry. During Holy Week, we focus intensely on His last days, His execution, His burial, and finally, with the great vigil, His resurrection. Every year on the Sunday before Easter, the sixth Sunday of Lent, the church celebrates Palm Sunday. It is also called Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. The name is appropriate as it celebrates Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, but also commemorates the beginning of Holy Week and Jesus' final journey to the cross. When Jesus enters triumphantly into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, the people shouting Hosanna, waving palm branches, a sign of victory and triumph, something that was done only to a person of highest honor. This Messiah King is the one who will liberate and bring peace to Israel. On Holy Thursday, we celebrate the final meal of Jesus with his disciples, the Last Supper. It is also the establishment of the Eucharist, of Christ, continuing presence among us. The washing of his disciples' feet, an act of extreme humility and service. And the Lord asking his disciples to do it in memory of him to wash one another's feet and to be at the service of each other. The time that he spends in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying to receive strength from the Father to go through the suffering that was going to follow, the agony in the garden where he fell to the ground, his sweat turning into blood, and at the same time asking his disciples to stay awake and pray so that they would not fall into temptation. Let's now meditate on the Via Dolorosa, the way of the cross, as Jesus was led to Calvary. Jesus is condemned to death. Jesus stands all alone before Pilate. Nobody speaks up for him. There is no one to defend him. 
Jesus' life was spent in helping others, listening and caring for the ignored. But no one seems to remember anything as they are planning to put him to death. It is true that sometimes we also feel alone, lonely. Sometimes I feel that others do not stand by me and defend and protect me. Sometimes I don't feel that I am treated fairly. I have a hard time when people criticize me at home or even at work. Lord, help me to be grateful for what you did for me, to accept criticism and not to complain. Help me to pray for those who hurt me. Then we find Jesus carrying his cross. Jesus accepted the cross. Jesus, you knew you would carry it to your death on Calvary. You knew it that it, would be, it wouldn't be easy, but you accepted it. Often, I don't like the problems that come on my way. I want others to take care of them. Often I become upset with others, even for small things. I feel like I'm not appreciated. There are times when I feel that I have more work than my companions, my co-workers. I tend sometimes feel as if I accept more responsibility than I need to. Help me. Help me not to self-pity myself, rather to take up the daily struggles without complaining or comparing as you accepted the cross. We see then Jesus falling the first time. Jesus, the cross you carried was very heavy. You became so weak and you fall down under the weight of the heavy cross. No one comes forward to help you. The soldiers hit you and force you to get up. For them, it is mere fun. Often, I too get tired of things. Sometimes, I do a miserable job just to get it completed. I do not pay attention and sometimes I give up when life becomes difficult. I also have the habit of postponing. May your grace help me to accept the hardships and get up from every fall to continue with life. Jesus meets his mother. Jesus, I'm sure you felt so alone carrying the cross as everyone around was yelling and screaming at you. I'm sure you looked around for a familiar face in the crowd. You longed for a comforting word. And you see your mother. She is helpless. But at the same time, her presence is so comforting. She was suffering with you. She was providing you the courage you to continue to carry the cross. There are times when I am cast down by the many things that are going on around me. I also look around for a familiar, friendly face. I look for someone to share my troubles and hardships, someone who really cares for me. Sometimes, I am overwhelmed by the innumerable happenings that are taking place around me. Life is very competitive, Lord, and I worry about my future. Let me realize my limitations and inability to solve every situation in life. May I be humble enough to accept help from others. Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry his cross. The weight of the cross and the scourging sun is wearing you down so fast. You have grown so weak. You find it hard to take away any more step forward. 
The soldiers are afraid that you might collapse on the way and die. So they get a man out from the crowd to help you carry the cross. He was only a bystander. I know people need my help. But often I pretend not to see and hear their needs. I ignore them. Even when I am asked to help, I pretend to be too busy. Lord, help me. Help me to be sensitive and mindful of others and their needs. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Jesus, you're exhausted. Your face is full of dirt and sweat mixed with your blood. You would appreciate any kind of comfort. Suddenly, a woman comes out of the crowd. Her name is Veronica. You can see how she cares for you as she takes, her, takes a handkerchief and begins to wipe the blood and sweat from your face. She can't do too much, but she offers the little help that she can. She does not worry about the soldiers and others who are jeering at you and who are trying to take, you know, make, take her away from you. As an appreciation, you imprint your facial image on her handkerchief. Often I ignore to accept that someone could use a little of my help and understanding. Sometimes I conveniently wait for others to come forward when I myself can and should do it. Often I ignore my coworker, friend, or a family member who could use me. I don't reach out to them and be of use to them. Help me to be observant, Lord, to be available to others in their need. Jesus falls the second time. This is the second time you fall on the road under the weight of the cross, Lord. As you grow weaker, the cross grows heavier and heavier. It becomes more difficult for you to get up. But you continue to struggle and try until you are up and walking again. You don't give up. When things get me down, I find it harder to keep trying. I become impatient with myself and find it difficult to believe in myself. It is easy to despair over small things. Help me. Help me when things seem difficult for me. Even when it is hard. Help me to get up and keep trying as you did. Assist me to do my best without comparing myself with others. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. Jesus, as you carry your cross on the way to Calvary, you see a group of women along the road. They cannot control their sorrow at seeing your suffering. They weep for you. You stop to spend a few moments with them to offer them some encouragement. Although you have been abandoned by your friends and are in pain, you stop. You stop and try to help them. You know, sometimes I think a lot about myself. I think about what I want and how others should try to please me. I become so absorbed in myself, what I would like that I forget about the needs of others. I take them for granted and often ignore their needs. Help me to think more about others. Help me to remember that others have problems as well. Help me to respond to them even when I am busy. Jesus falls a third time. 
Jesus, you have been carrying the cross for a long time. It is very heavy and you have grown so weak. You fall again beneath your cross. You know, it is coming to an end. You continue to struggle. You get up and you keep going. I also fail time and time again. I find it hard to get along with my brothers and sisters. Sometimes I'm not honest and sometimes I'm lazy. It is just too hard sometimes. I become discouraged when I am confronted by the same problems over and over again. I become discouraged and depressed when I have health problems. Jesus, help me. Help me to think of the cross you carried. Help me to realize that I can make the changes in my life that I need to, that I am able. You don't give up. I can have the same strength to get up again as well. Jesus is stripped of his clothes. Jesus, you have arrived on the top of Calvary. The soldiers notice that you have something of value. They remove your cloak and throw dice for it. Your wounds are torn open once again as they strip, or strip you of the clock that is stuck to your body. Some in the crowd even make fun of you. They mock you and challenge you to perform a miracle for them to see. Often, I am tempted to be disrespectful to others. I sometimes entertain immoral thoughts. I become bad example for others. Help me to be pure and clean. Help me to overcome worldly desires that I may become more like you. Jesus is nailed to the cross. You are stretched out on the cross you carried so far. The soldiers drive big nails into your hands and feet. You feel abandoned. You suffer excruciating pain as the nails pierce into you. Blood gushes out. I discriminate against others. Even without thinking, I judge others because of their color, caste, or religion. I forget that I am to live as a brother or sister to every people. Sometimes I use harsh words. When I speak to my children, my family members, help me to look again at the people around me. Help me to see the hurt and pain I have caused in others. And be with me to help me make amends for the harm I have done. Jesus dies on the cross. As Jesus hung on the cross, he forgave the soldiers who crucified him. He prayed for his mother and friends. He promised heaven to the good thief. Jesus wanted all of us to be able to live forever with God. So he gave all he had for us. Once I hold a grudge on others, who have hurt me instead of forgiving, not realizing that I too may hurt others through my words or deeds and would like to be forgiven. It is not easy to forgive others as you did, Lord. In, your daily, in our daily struggles, we find it easier to ignore and ridicule those who have hurt us. The body of Jesus he is taken down from the cross. Jesus, how brutally you were put to death, but how gently you are taken down from the cross. Your suffering and pain are ended, and you are laid in the lap of your loving mother. 
You are treated with love. It was a sorrowful moment when she said farewell silently. Help me to see the good things in everyone. Help me become more gentle and loving person through my greater appreciation for those around me. O oh Mary, mother most sorrowful, the sword of grief pierced your soul when you saw Jesus lying lifeless in your bosom. Obtain for me a hatred for sin and grace to live a Christian life. Jesus is laid in the tomb. Jesus, your body is prepared for burial. Joseph of Arimathea gave you his own tomb. He laid your body there and rolled a large stone in front of it, then went home. What a sad day it has been for so many people. There are times when I try to keep everything for myself. I find it hard to share my things with my brothers and sisters and with my friends. I find a strange satisfaction accumulating things and keeping them for to myself. Help me. Help me think of Joseph of Arimathea who risked his own life as he accepted your body for burial. Help me think of how Joseph loved Jesus so much that he gave his own tomb. My dear Jesus, I have traveled the Via Dolorosa, your way of the cross, my way of the cross. It seems so real and I feel so ashamed. I complain about my sufferings and find obedience to the Father's will so difficult. I'm bogged down by the poverty, sickness, starvation, greed and hatred in the world. There are many innocent people who suffer so unjustly. There are those born with physical and mental defects. May we understand that you continue to carry your cross in the minds and bodies of each human person. Help me to see the Father's will in every incident of my daily life. This is what you did. You saw the Father's will in your persecutors, your enemies and in your pain. You saw a beauty in the cross and embraced it as a desired treasure. Help me to trust the Father and to realize that there is something great behind the most insignificant suffering. There is someone lifting my cross to fit my shoulders. There is divine wisdom in all the simple annoyances that irk my soul every day. Jesus, you completed your mission and nothing would deter, deter you. You barreled through the barriers that usually stop us dead in our tracks. Fear of ridicule, fear of suffering, abandonment by our closest companions. You're willing to endure the sting of sin to blot our sin and was eager to face death in order to overcome it. You said very little during your passion. You were truly like a lamb led to the slaughter or like a sheep before the shearers, silent and open not your mouth. You preached through your silence, your most powerful sermon. Enable us, enable me, Jesus, to be one with your passion, so as to be one with your resurrection and ascension. Do you want to fall in love with God? I'm sure we all want to. The book of Psalms contains the directions. Thousands of years ago, 
People like you and me talk to God out of the depths of their hearts, revealing an intimate love. Psalms are the expression of the faith in God by people around 3,000 years ago. God was not a mere abstract creator, but was present, involved, and a real person of power and emotions. Now, when we read or listen to the Psalms, we can know the intensity of this love. Entering into the influence of the Psalms, we can find a path to know and love God. To know more about the Psalms, you should get a copy of Father Mike Manning's booklet, The Psalms. It will help you to understand the 150 Psalms better as he has categorized them. He uses the technique of acts, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. Get your copy today and know the categories. Learn to pray with the Psalms. Call the number on the screen or email us. You can also get it through our website. Get your copy today. silent prayer I am frightened by the Lord I bear in this world as cold as stone must I walk this road alone help me be strong Breath.